Swine flu may dominate the headlines this week, but will we even remember it a year from now? In a nation where instant access rules with Twitter, Blackberries, and Facebook, have our long-term memories gone out the window? Some of us don't need any help with that. Are we too quick to forget the things we should learn the most from? Joining us, Marion Salzman, Chief Marketing Officer at Porter Novelli Worldwide, and Dr. James Grubman of Family Wealth Consulting. All right. Pardon me while I look your names up again. I just forgot them. Marion, yes. um, what about this? I mean, are we becoming a nation of short attention spans? We are and a nation. And if we are, what, what difference does that make? Well, it makes a difference only in that we think about things in 140 character lifestyles. Um, what are you doing right now? So will we remember swine flu? It all has to do with how long does it last? Does it uh, hit in our own communities? How serious is it? Uh, lots of hype, but lots of short attention span, and we'll forget it quickly unless it hits really close to home. Dr. Grubman, what's yes. your, what, what, what is your uh, field, by the way? Uh, I'm a psychologist. A psychologist? Okay. Yes. That's good. My wife's a psychologist. Yes. Um, <laughs> and she always tells me I'm, I'm always wrong, so um, you may, yeah, tell, that me, nuts, you may yeah. tell me the same thing. <laughs> But, well, we'll check I mean, your memory this, soon, uh, Mark. Yeah. Is this memory, well, you know, I mean, when you get older, that, that happens anyway. Is this memory thing a problem for us societally? Well, I think what we're seeing is uh, an exaggeration of what human nature has been for a very long time. I think perfectly, uh, uh, particularly with investors, um, being able to pay attention to long-term trends as opposed to just what's happening only recently has always been a problem, uh, what's called the recency effect in behavioral finance. So I think people uh, have to work really hard to maintain uh, their memories and a longer attention span in today's life. Mary, how much of this has to do, you've got blackberries now, you're talking about the, what was it, 120 character lifestyle, I don't know, we're referring to Twitter specifically, uh, but, but we can multitask. We, we more than multitask, yeah, we're, we're having three, four, seven um, conversations at once, and why should we really care about what happened yesterday if we're living in real time and we're living in tomorrow's time? And I think there's a real sense of no need to look backwards because tomorrow's going to be better. Um, it's all about change, how quickly we're going to change, what are we going to embrace and change. A real sense of I can just delete, cut and paste and start again. Well, doesn't this become a problem because we don't remember pain as well as we should? Yeah, it is a problem if pain is going to have to be what we learn from. I mean, that certainly is a societal ill that we're facing right now. Doctor, you agree? Yes, I would agree. Uh, it's sometimes been said that we remember uh, a kiss or something uh, very pleasurable right. much better than we remember the pain of uh, childbirth or other really difficult things. So well, plus, that I is mean, you uh, could, part of human nature. You can recreate in, with your mind, you can recreate emotions, but you can't recreate the pain. You can remember how harder. lovely something felt, but you can't or how sad recreate you felt, that but, pain. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I think also in the uh, looking at the pain of the markets, one of the things that we may be uh, having to face is whether as the markets perhaps begin to get a little bit better, whether people are going to all too easily forget the pain and perhaps the lessons of what we've just been through and only focus on the good times that they think are coming ahead. Well, how about the flip side, though? I mean, we lost a generation with the market crash of 29. Uh, there's an example of when people remember, remembered the pain. Yes, and also, uh, you know, right now people are being more prudent with their savings. The savings rate is going up because times are hard and we're in a lot of pain. But uh, what we've seen in past recessions and past bear markets is that once uh, the right market back. starts to recover, uh, people go back to spending more. So and then, what's and the lesson we can take from that then? And the one place where I think you may find that people just are not going to go back in is in buying. I think there's going to be a long-term renter's envy memory. People are just going to say, hey, real estate's not for me. I'm not an expert. I'm not going to get in the middle of this. I'm going to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to rent. I'm going to participate by pay as I go, rent month in, month out. Real estate doesn't just only go in one direction. That's up a couple of percentage points a year. So I think that memory is going to be permanently imprinted, and it's going to last. All right. Marion Talsman, uh, Dr. James Grubman, thanks very much to both of you. Appreciate it.